Hold on to Sunday, right? Uh, no, Saturday or Sunday, I decided to finally go out to Fold Nightclub. I already bought a ticket to Fold's opening night. And if you're not familiar with Fold, Fold is a new 24-hour venue that's opened up in London. Um, that's opened up in East, in Canning Town, which is kind of around the corner from where I used, uh, I kind of grew up. So it's an amazing space. Um, they've kind of outfitted out this old factory with an amazing sound system. Um, they've got like you know an incredible set of DJs there, a great bar and everything else. And it opened up, well, it, it unofficially opened a few weeks ago with a few other events, but kind of to the public opened up this weekend. And I was kind of in two minds about going. I didn't want to go because I was, I was a little bit tired from the whole experience of DJing, of working the whole week, doing a nine to five, and then DJing on a Friday. It's, always, it's kind of taking its toll on me, kind of like, you know, little by little because I'm spending most of my week doing a podcast, I'm writing on a blog. I mean, my mind's kind of always constantly on. So I kind of just wanted to have like an off switch night, but I kind of thought, you know what? It's the first night, it's opening night. It's going to be something that's going to last, last, um, live with me forever, regardless if it's good or bad, right? I just wanted to see it with my own eyes. I'm a big believer in just seeing things, right? Um, experiencing it for yourself. Every, I don't know. There's a thing in London, uh, maybe most of most, most, most prevalent cities are like this. There's this weird like cynicism with stuff that you haven't actually done. Or you actually haven't been to yourself, right? Um, you hear someone say something like, ah, man, that, that's over or that's finished. That's dead. But when's the last time you went? When did you have you actually been there, or you just like talking from secondhand experience or other people that have told you or third hand stories? Like I like to actually go myself, actually see it for myself, and make my own mind up, right? Because sometimes people as well like um, this is a weird example, a real parallel to to cross with. But I've always it's something that's kind of like always baffled me. Oh no, it's something that's baffled me, not always because it's only something recent. But the restaurant Chicken Sours, right? It's a very popular restaurant. They've opened. I think they're about to open up another space somewhere. They've got space in Dawson. They've got one in Covent Garden. I think they're going to open up a third location. Or maybe I said fourth. I don't know. But they've got another location opening up. I've been there three times, right? Um, I've been to. I've been twice to the Dawson location. No, I've been twice, sir. Let me not lie. I've been once to the Dawson location, and I've been once to the um, to the location in. No, actually, I've been three times. I've been twice to Dawson, and I've been once to the one in Covent Garden. And all three occasions I've been, I, I thought it was quite mediocre, right? I thought the chicken was quite dry. Um, and I thought the best thing that they served on the menu wasn't even a chicken dish. It was an aubergine, like the fried aubergine. Um, I think they chitlins or dumplings they've got, right? They're, those are fucking delicious. But it's a chicken restaurant, right? The chicken should be the best thing on the menu, but it's not. It's not that great. I don't think it's that amazing. So... If I go by what everyone else says, right, Chicken Towers is like one of the best fried chicken spots in London. They've got an amazing recipe, blah, 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 blah. But I don't think it's that good, personally. I swear to God, in my life, I don't think it's that good. I think my local chicken shop has better chicken in them. I know it might be sacrilegious to say that, but that's my own opinion. Now, I've only got that opinion because I've been there myself and I've would, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I've not gone into it with any sort of cynicism. I've gone into an open eye and op an open mind and wanted to be, well, went, I wanted to be impressed, right? And I went in there and I was a bit underwhelmed by it. So the same goes with these clubs and nightclubs and stuff, and nights especially, or bars. I want to just go experience it myself. So I thought, you know what? And let me let me, let me put my big boy boots on and head out and go to Fold and just see what it's about. And then I kind of remembered lastminute.com, like because I'm a bit of a numpty. I remember, oh, yeah, it's a 24-hour club, right? So I don't need to go at 10 p.m. on a Saturday. I can just sleep in and go in at, I don't know, sometime in the morning at 4 a.m. or something on a Sunday morning. So I did just that. I hung out a little bit with uh, the brunette and her brother who came to visit, which was quite cool. We watched some videos, we chilled out, ate some food, and I went to bed. I went to bed and, uh, with the aim of waking up at five and then heading to the um, nightclub. So I ended up doing that. I ended up waking up um, just in time to, just in t enough time for me to prepare and try and get a bus there. But unfortunately, by the time I got ready and shit, it's weird because when you get ready, when you get wake up really early in the morning, it takes you much longer to get ready than you would in a normal time of the day. I was just running really slow, I was really lethargic. So I ended up finally getting up and going. And I ended up leaving my house, but by the time I left my house, I've missed the bus. And then I think the buses come every five, every half an hour. Um, I think after whatever two a.m. or one a.m. So I decided, you know what, fuck it, let me walk. Because I remember, because you know, it, it's kind of like the it's a it's a two mile walk, but it kind of reminds me of a walk you'd make if you if you were on holiday. If I went to somewhere like Berlin or whatever, right, I wouldn't necessarily take a train somewhere just because I just would want to experience the city and just walk around. I did that quite a lot often in Berlin, mostly because I was afraid of getting off at the wrong stop and shit, right? And mostly because I just didn't want to pay for a travel card. And I didn't want to go... I'm not the kind of person that's going to go to Berlin and start bumping trains, right? It's just... It just seems nonsensical to me. I need to get caught and have to pay a fine. It's just ridiculous. I'd rather walk everywhere. So I thought, you know, let me do the same thing here. So I decided to walk from Stratford to Canning Town, which is not that long of a walk, really. Um, and goes to make me even more of a bad fucking uh, son and brother for not visiting my family. But hey, I'll, I'll make up to them. So I ended up walking. Um, it took me about, what, 40 minutes to get to the, to get to the club? Um, I was I was anticipating to kind of get there for about four so I could see... what's the Let me get a, the, um, the lineup. 
I went to get that about, about four so I could see um, World well Unknown play. But unfortunately, I didn't get there with enough time. So I had to kind of like see some other guys play. But all in all, not that bad experience. By the time you get to West Ham Station, you can already hear the music. Boom, boom, boom. And like I mentioned before, right? The location of Fold is exactly where Night, 24 Hour Nightclub should be in London, right? I'm going to try and get up the lineup here on the screen so you guys can see. Why is it showing? Why is it like that for? Weird. Uh, you know what? Let me exit out. Anyway, I got, I'm going to try to get this up on the screen so you guys can see her on screen about the lineup. Anyway, the location of Fold is where it should be in London, right? It's on the outskirts of East. It's in the bit, it's basically in the middle of a loads of factories and uh, post office depots. Like there's a DLA, there's a DHL uh, depot there. There used to be a parcel force depot there that I think has moved to Beckton now. So uh, again, Beckton will be a good area. Beckton where the kind of um, Galleons Reach shopping center is. If you're familiar with East London, you know what I'm talking about. If not, don't worry about it. But um, there's a shopping area in that um, in that kind of East London area that's kind of like an industrial place. There's some offices there. There's a UEL campus there, I think, in, in Beckton. Those would be a good area to have like clubs, right? Um, the only problem with Beckton is that there's not real good transport links. But I guess if you have a 24-hour club, it doesn't matter because the tube will open about four or five. Is it? I think five or something. The tube, the, the deal are open so you can, people can still get home. And plus, the other benefit of Fold uh, in West Ham is that Star Lane um, DLR station is right next to it, which I didn't, which I actually didn't know. I was like, oh yeah, Star Lane is right here. So I ended up walking all the way there. Um, you hear the bass running and the actual club itself is amazing, man. Because actually, uh, as the picture shows, the club, actually, let me try to get it up on here so I can show you guys and kind of describe it quickly. As the picture shows on the club, it's sort of like... Um, it looks, it's like a factory, right? Obviously, it's like a factory location. And um, it's uh, you have to kind of walk up the stairs to kind of go in. So it, it's really, it's architectural-wise, it really reminds me of like a, a Berlin kind of club. It's super industrial. The idea that you kind of have to walk up these like metal stairs and you kind of go into this dark room before you get into the main club. It's got lockers all over it. And then you pass these kind of like red uh, plastic film sheets. Like, sort of like a, you know, like an... Um, when they cut up meat, right? Those kind of meat grinding workshops, you kind of put, pierce through there and you can just walk into a bar and you just boom, boom, boom. Do you know what I mean? So as soon as you walk in, you just hear the fucking bass running. And it was just an amazing, amazing space. I'm sure I'm going to try and get it up here so you guys can see. So yeah, let me get up on the screen here. So this base, this, this, if you, hopefully you guys can see this, the picture. So this space here, right? So, that corner is where that this is this is where the club is right that that's basically the club there as you can see if you can see on the screen if not then just go hit the resident advisor and you can click on fold and it's got an arc on it it's got the kind of pictures on there i didn't take pictures actually because i was just so enamored actually i did with my film camera inside someone took a one for me but um the space this kind of this is the entrance that goes into the club so you kind of come from this way down right this is where West Ham Station is and Canton Station is basically back around over here and you walk down and then this gate here is where they kind of let people in entrance wise. The entrance, again, before I got there, I didn't look at anything on social media so I don't know why everything happened. Now, and you found out later that people on social media were getting pissed off because they had to wait for two hours in the queue. They were getting annoyed. People were demanding refunds. People are, people were getting really pissed off because they're saying that they were acting like a second rate bird kind and being some really like kind of snarky comments written on the, uh, on the Facebook wall and it looks like the the event page was uh, public. You could just post whatever you wanted to post. And I think since all the backlash, some of the comments were deleted and now they're asking for approval for comments. So there's been a little weird little like, you know, you know how people get when they don't get into clubs. They get really, um, some people get really, uh, I won't say it's entitled, but I think some people have this assumption that once they buy a ticket somewhere, not assumption, I guess, some people have an idea that once they buy a ticket somewhere, they have to be let in, right? They have to just go in. Like, it's just a, it's a standard thing, right? You make a reservation for a restaurant, you should have your table. You shouldn't go there and say, oh, I'm sorry, but we're full. It's like, what? I made a reservation. doesn't matter if you're full. Make space for me. So there's that same sort of like feeling when it comes to nightclub. But nightclubs are a bit weird like that, right? It's like a little bit ephemeral. Uh, sometimes things can get oversold because they're not sure who's... Again, because it's Facebook, Facebook events or events in general, if you ever put an event on, you would know that you probably... For everyone that replies, for, for, for the... Like, again, if you send out invites for an event, right? Some You might get a thousand people reserve... Res res uh, clicking to reserve uh, a spot to come to an event, but you're likely to only get 5% if 10%. Maximum 10% of those people will actually come, that like physically come, right? But sometimes you can hit the jackpot and you could just get, oh, you could you could uh, oversubscribe on social media and then people actually turn up in their droves that it should have been itself. And it's like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know this happened, right? And I guess if you're fold, you kind of don't worry about that because you're a 24-hour club, so you're like, okay, cool. Even though we've oversold it, imagine if the theory is... 
on the internet is that they oversold, which I don't believe. But imagine if they, they, they did. They might be thinking, all right, cool. Even if we have oversold, it's 24 hours. We should, be able to, we should be able to cycle people in and out of this club enough to get people in. But, you know, opening night, people are excited about the club and maybe it didn't work out the way they wanted to work out. But regardless of that, I went anyway. And I didn't see all the stuff on social media beforehand. So I just kind of went, I kind of rocked up there. I kind of think I got up there about five, right? Uh, it was quite, it was, it was a bit light outside. There was a small queue, maybe about 15 people deep, not that long. So I, started, I, I quickly stood in the back of the queue. I folded up my jacket, I put it in my bag. I, I took a little um, side bag with me that I usually take little places and faces bag. Um, I rolled up my bag in my, uh, I rolled up my jacket in my bag. I put it in there and I just stood around waiting. I thought, hold on, this doesn't make no sense. Why am I in the queue if I got a ticket? So I thought, no, fuck it. Let me go. I was the queue guy. I was the queue guy. He said, yep, no worries. You can jump the queue. So I quickly jumped the queue, went to the front, um, showed the lady in front of my my uh, my ticket, had no problems getting in. Then I had to sh- then I had to show my ID. Then I had to show it to my bag, and then I had to take a picture, which is a bit annoying, you know, a bit disconcerting. But I guess you know these things have to be done now. Most big clubs, I think they do that in fabric, right? And I've, and some Soho clubs they do that where they take your passport ID, they scan it in, and take a picture. So I'm guessing in case anything happens and you kick off wherever they've got a record of who you are. I don't know. It's a bit annoying. It's a bit like, you know, it's a bit black mirror-ish. But, you know, you, you do these things. You want to go in. Then as you kind of go, as you kind of walk in past the security, you get given your, your ID back. There's a little courtyard area, which I'm sure is where the little pop-up shops were. I saw people selling T-shirts. I saw people posting pictures like record labels selling T-shirts and merch and shit. So I'm assuming that where the area is. And maybe that might be an area where they kind of have people like do uh, barbecue and food and stuff. That might be a good occasion to do that sort of stuff. So that was quite cool. And then you basically walk up these metal girders, these steps here, right? You walk up the steps. And then um, as you walk up the steps, you kind of head into the club. I walk up the steps. There's usually a security guard here. You quickly check your ticket. No, you won't check your ticket again. But you just walk in, walk in here. And then the amazing thing they've got, they've got lockers all over the inside as you walk in, right? So little key lockers. I think how it works out to, I'm assuming it's ten pound, right? Deposit. So you get, um, you put. And I think it's seven pound for the lock and ten pound for the deposit. Maybe seventeen pound altogether. I'm not sure. Again, uh, it was a fuzzy night. So whatever much money it is, you put a deposit down, you get your you get your padlock and you can put as much stuff you want in there. So you, as friends, you can all chip in together and just stuff everything inside the locker, which is fucking incredible good idea because that then reduces people getting pickpocketed. It reduces people leaving jackets, which it, they were still doing anyway because everyone's fucking cheap in London. It reduces people leaving jackets on the side of the of the, of the the stage or leaving them behind the fences and shit. It's just annoying, right? But some people were leaving like, you know, you could tell they didn't really give a shit about their hoodie. It was like a shitty grey hoodie. Just fucking you know, leave it on the side there. Someone jacks it, jacks it, but... Most of them possession possessions are leaving inside the cupboards, inside the little locker. Sorry. So that was a, that was a great little addition. Then you walk into another one door. You walk into a through another door, and you come through these kind of like um again like I said um like a, if you know those meat packing places have those like re- red vinyl film things that hang up the kind of like curtains. You kind of peel through that as you walk through. You go straight into the bar, and you just kind of hear the bass boom 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 boom. And at the back you have like a kind of where the sound engineer sits with the lighting lighting and the sound. The sound guy, I guess, a PA person. He's also doing the lights on there. Then there's a bar along the whole, the right hand side of the bar, and then at the back there's a massive DJ booth. Like it's huge, right? And I'm assuming they could probably fit eight turntables on it. Honestly, it's really long, and it's kind of encased on a metal cage, which kind of reminds me a little bit of the Burkhine because they've kind of got they've kind of got a bit of a metal fence, and then they have the speakers hung by chains, like a super industrial. But this this ones they don't have speakers hung by chains. They have, they have them in stacks, uh, function one stacks of, of speakers like on, on either's end and then they have some at the back as well monitors at the back so amazing sound and then they had this uh really cool because it's not super again i like it again i'm i'm, I'm not i don't despise it. i thought i did i wouldn't like it but on the on this wall right um they've got these uh wooden screens with little holes in it so it peeps through so you can see the light on the outside of the courtyard so then when it was kind of lighting up even though it was dark inside you could still kind of hear a bit of like sunlight was creeping through the in, inside into the dance floor so the bit of sound was creepy for the dance floor, so it kind of gave a good vibe. And on the other side, they've got like a little stage that people were dancing, and I was dancing too. So a lot, a lot of the people there were dancing, having some good times. Like all the gay guys, of course, on the dance. Oh yeah, the outfits. Oh god, some of the gay guys' outfits in there were so cool. So much Rick Owens, so much bondage. There was a guy that had on a ball gag. There was like just some really good, great looks. Really, really um, awesome, awesome looks from the guys that are in that venue. Like they just smashed it. And um, some of the girls too looked incredible. There was a guy that had like a sort of like weird. It wasn't a gimp mask, but he kind of cut a bit of this girl's shirt and made and wore it into like a mask, like a bit of a mesh net. It looked fucking incredible. It reminded me of like a, a Raph Simmons thing. 
one of the Rav Simmons shows where he kind of had the actually his hair was kind of similar too. He kind of had the hair like really flattened down with a with a straight fringe, and he had a kind of like a a red mesh on with a, with the lace hanging out on the side, and he was pulling along it wearing like a massive trench coat and like with just knickers on. We're just sorry, we're just pants on, right? And a really um a kind of like bondage vest on. Just amazing outfits all in all, right? Really, the clubbers came out in force like last night. Fucking insane. I love them all. That was cool. Um, so the music was amazing. I saw some really great DJs. I can't really mention who. Um, I think, I'm oh, sorry, towards the end, the full DJs were really sick. They played some good songs. Uh, Body Hammer were amazing. G, G and Dancy, the, the, I think that's who I saw from 5 to 12. I saw G, um, G Dance, Body Hammer, IB, IB, IHTBXI, and Fold Crew. They were all sick. And again, amazing space. I think I mentioned it previously because I'm going to wrap up now because I got head off. But I mentioned it previously to a lot of people out there. I think for everyone that was visiting the venue, it was an amazing experience. I think London has been, we've been needing this for so long, right? Um, I think this, they've done an amazing, um, they've done an amazing transformation of the space because I, I dread to think what that might look like previously to them moving in, right? They've really fucking kitted it out. The sound's amazing. They've got great staff. The entry was kind of flawless for me personally. Again, I got that five. I'm I'm nobody, right? I got that on my own. I'm a no one. I don't know anybody in in that kind of underground scene. I'll just do my own thing here and late in the Stratford. I don't have any connects or anything. I just want to party and have a good time, right? So I didn't know anyone. I got let in really easily. The security was painless. I had to take a picture. It was a bit annoying, whatever, security thing. I don't know how you guys are a privacy. Uh, getting in was simple. They've got lockers in there if you want to be safe. I carried my kind of like bum bags. I didn't just put nothing in the locker. I just kept this with me all the time. Um, I guess maybe be cautious maybe because, you know, when once this club starts getting popular, maybe pickpockets might arrive and they can't really help that situation happening, but hopefully it doesn't happen. But I think overall, we need to take care of each other, like in that kind of space. We, make, we need to make sure that place is safe and everyone's doing, the, everyone's doing the right and correct thing. I think there needs to be maybe a rule with people maybe not doing drugs on the dance floor. I think that might be something that maybe people need to enforce with themselves in the community itself, right? Kind of making people like go away and not do it on the dance floor, do you know what I mean? And not be bait, um, just to kind of ruin the vibe and shit. Let's just take care of each other in that respect. And just look after the space, man. Not fuck it up. Because, I don't know, London, London, we have a tendency to fuck up things, right? And just in general, in Clubland, maybe there is... A, I forgot where I read it in the book somewhere on interview. Some Somebody said something along the lines of, like, um, most great clubs have, like, a four-year cycle, right? Every four years, they kind of have to reinvent themselves because, you know, it kind of gets dead and the people that were there before kind of say it's not happening and everyone's kind of always looking for the new thing right but places like Burger and places like Club Division there places like Prince Charles uh the school being even maybe a, a recent example even Ministry of Sounds maybe not so much Fabric sometimes they've have they've had these long storied they had this history right these brand names even plastic people if, it's, if it came back now people would queue up and go there I think we can achieve it, but it takes a lot of care, right? It takes the venue being really... T Again, this is something that's going to anger a lot of people that didn't get in, but it takes the venue being a bit anal about who they're letting. It takes... It, it takes um the people at the door being very being very um strict with the entry policy with, in terms of the ID. You don't get in, no ID, no entry kind of thing. It takes... um a lot of work to kind of really make sure the space functions cohesively and doesn't kind of like burn out, right? And it takes also the punters going in there to kind of give it, to give the space a chance. It's the first night. If you didn't get in and the queue was too long and the security took the piss, okay, don't worry. Give those guys your feedback, right? Write an email, um, make an angry post, write on Instagram. But it's the first night, like cut the guy some slack. Like even if I didn't get in, right, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't take it as personally as that because I think, you know, it's the first night. Yes, I, w I walked 40 minutes and I would have been bummed if I didn't get in, but Overall, I think first night, um, let them, you know, it's kind of, you have to kind of iron out the chinks, kind of get, kind of, you know, um, shake off all the cobwebs and eventually it will kind of get where it needs to get to. But I really hope that we kind of take care of the space. We take care of each other in there and we help Fold become one of the kind of like leading places to kind of go to on a night out or on a weekend. Um, do you know what I mean? Especially if you're going to party 24 hours and it might get, and again, eventually get to the point where it just becomes the spot. You don't care who's playing, you just go. That's where I think eventually they probably want to get to. That's where those greatest clubs like Bergheim and all those kind of places like Robert Johnson in Frankfurt, that's how they work so well because no one necessarily, care, even um, Salon de Amateurs in um, Hamburg, is it, in Hamburg? Um, they no one really cares if the, what the lineup is. They just know it's going to be a good party, right, in this space um, overall. And it takes everyone. It takes bar backs. It takes the bar staff. It takes uh, security, people that are working there, the bookers, the venue people. Like, everyone needs to work together to make sure this place works out. And I think overall it will get there. But for me, it was an amazing experience. I'm going to close out by playing this voice memo 
that I um that I recorded whilst I was in the toilet listening um kind of enjoying the experience it might be a bit embarrassing because I haven't heard it much. I haven't actually replayed it myself but fuck it let me just play it through through the speaker and this is how I'm going to end the podcast listen to it so this is me in fold at probably about I don't know 7 a.m or something like that maybe in the morning um sitting on sitting on the sitting on the loo having a poo right this is me recording in fold let me play out here so you guys can hear it this Let's go. There you go. Let me play it now. Can you hear that? Hold on. Oh, there you go. Let me rewind that. What up, world? I'm currently sat in fold like from hell to toilet. It's an amazing scene. I can't describe to you how truly amazing it is to be somewhere in London where you can party until 12 in the afternoon. Actually, you know what? Let me restart that. That sounds fucking insane. Let me restart that and play it from my Bluetooth speaker see if that works a little bit better. Because this space was too much not to talk about. Turn off the Bluetooth on my laptop quickly. But yeah, Fold was amazing. I loved it. Great experience. I can't wait to go back again, but probably not very soon because I need to recover. I'm still feeling a bit worse for wearing that, even though I've slept like probably about 12 hours. So that probably won't happen for another another month and a half. But it's there now. I know there's a space to go to if I want to have a 24-hour party, but not, not again. Please, not again. Not again. Let me play this for you out here. Let me see if it works here better so you guys can hear this properly. This is me again at 4 to 4 a.m. Let's hear this. What's happening here? Play! Look at that. Be amazing. What up, world? I'm currently sat in fold night club now. It's an amazing scene. I can't describe to you how truly amazing it is to be somewhere in London where you can party until 12 in the afternoon. If I was from Billy, I'd start going to make sure that the space is perfect and nothing shaped. The scene is amazing. The scene is amazing. And the sound is probably one of the best systems I've heard in a long time. Fold is probably going to be the age for the doors of a new age in London. And I can't see what happens next. There we go. That's a good way to end it. Fold is going to be the dawn of a new age of clubbing, right, in London. That is where it's going to be. 24-hour clubbing in London. Amazing. Good. You all, everyone involved in that club, congratulations for it. And make sure you release that fucking t-shirt. I need to buy a t-shirt. The t-shirt looks amazing. They've got a t-shirt with, um, with the opening night kind of symbol on it. And I think the lineup on the back as well, I'm not sure what it is. It looks fucking incredible. So I can't wait until that comes out very soon. I need to get that merch.